How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and today I want to show you how to do a DIY install with what's called Top Speed from Snap and Rack. I have six panels that I'd like to place on this asphalt shingle roof and these DIY friendly Top Speed mounts are perfect for this type of installation with a few key benefits that just makes it very flexible and easy to install. Now I already have my first row start and you can see my six mounts that will go ahead and mount to the three panels that will be on each row. I'm going to install this last one and then show you how to line up that first row and then also show you a few of the key features like these four lag bolts for each mount. Now that might be a concern to you guys, but we actually do load these up with sealant to make sure those four lag bolts that are sinking in, they're not going right to your truss. Conventionally, when we're doing a mounting system, we would have mounting points and each of those would have a lag screw going in and securing to a truss. Usually like to get about two and a half inches sunk into the truss for each of your mounting points. And then you would put a rail on each of your mounting points. Well, for the top speed system, there's gonna be no rail. It is just these mounts and a few other pieces depending on what your install looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure this guy, line these all up, and then we'll start to piece in our solar panels. And you'll see some of the key benefits of using the system. But as always, I wanna hear what you guys think. What's your experience and would this fit some of your needs at home. So let's jump into it. So taking this first mounting point, you'll wanna make sure the base is not on an edge of the shingles, that it's right in the middle. And then you'll have adjustment once you sink the four lag screws, which you will want to see the sealant squishing out. That is a good sign. Then once the base is set, now you can do your up and down and left to right adjustments. I adjust my first mounting point and my last mounting point in this first lineup to exactly where I want so it's a consistent distance from the edge of the roof. Then I'll connect up the string on the same side of the mount and then this gives me a reference point again left to right but then also up and down for the remaining four mounts that will be in this first string of mounts connecting up two per panel. So I'll have three panels going in in a landscape orientation on this first row. And then total, I'll have two rows. So you'll see how these mounting points actually work together. And it makes your job a ton easier where you can do a lot more work on the ground opposed to work up on the roof. And now here's an example of one of the key benefits to the top speed system, and that is getting the rest of your mounting points attached to your panels on the ground. So I just measured one foot from each end and then tightened one bolt for the mounting point to secure it to the panel frame. And then my overall setup here is pretty simple because these are just running into EcoFlow Delta Pros. So I don't have micro inverters. I don't have power optimizers. I don't have any rapid shutdown equipment. If you do have that, you want to install it here on the ground before we take the panels up. That will make the overall time on the roof much easier and quicker. And don't forget, you should be thinking through wire management. How are you going to run your wires? How are you going to bring these panels together? So again, when you're up on the roof, you kind of have that all thought out. So let's go ahead and jump up and install our first row of three panels. Now I'm just going to use my quote unquote truck ladder here. I'm going to position the three panels for that first row just in the bed of the truck and then I'm going to get up on the roof because it's only a single story and then pull up those panels getting them ready to start positioning them on that first row of mounts that we have up there. You will get an appreciation for solar installers after trying to hoist panels up to any height roof. Now I do understand depending on where you live, your experience, and if you want to actually take on or can take on these type of projects, DIY solar might not be for you, but I still am a big believer in solar, especially with some incentives in your area. In my state of Illinois, we have net metering, which is a huge benefit. And then also we have renewable energy credits. And I don't know how long either of those are gonna last. So this year I got 11 kilowatts professionally installed on my home and I started off just by estimating the cost and seeing how large of a system did I need to offset my monthly power bill. If you wanna do that same exercise for your own home, you can see a link in the description and it'll only take you a couple minutes where you put in some information on your power bill, on your home, and then it's able to give you an estimate on that cost and the size of system you need to offset your monthly bills. 
Now, if that's something you're interested, I would recommend sooner rather than later, try to get a few installers out to really see what the exact quote is to know if that's in your budget. And then also if one of those installers is the trusted partner that you want covering your 20 or 25 year warranty on the systems. So let's go ahead and jump back in and install that first panel. All right, and you should have the longer tabs facing up so it's easy to set that panel down and then rest it into place. Before securing your first one, I'll put my second panel, making sure I'm connecting up my wires. I'm just wiring these three panels in series, so I just have a very simple wire connection to make, but a little bit of wire management needs to be done prior to starting to set these. Now, once I feel good about that, I'll go to that first panel and get this set into place. We'll wanna move those bases so the base is completely on one shingle. It's not hovering two different shingles. You'll do that before applying your sealant and getting everything locked up. Also, I'll use my torpedo level, just making sure the panels are level. Then I'll use my sealant on the four pads, two on each mount, and then secure down each of the four lag screws per mount. Once I have that first one done, then I'll bring in the third panel, do a very similar process, connecting things up, doing a little bit of wire management before I actually secure that second panel. Now let me know what you guys think down in the description. This is a lot of lag screws going through your roof. So I wanna know what do you guys think and how do you feel about that? Is it too many or do you think the sealant's gonna do the job? This is a detached garage for me. It's unfinished on the inside. I have plenty of extra shingles. So it's not quite as risky because if I need to swap things out or if I have a problem, I'm not going to be destroying drywall, insulation, getting in my home. So there's a little less risk and I'm able to kind of test these things out. Now, before I put on my second row and kind of get everything completed, I do want to put on the front skirt. So there are skirts and this is also what ties all these panels together. So you can just have one grounding lug and all your panels will be grounded and tied together. So I'll loosen up these front mounting. So I'll loosen up these front mounting bolts and I'll also use these spacers that you get that go on the front side here and help space this correctly so then you tighten this back down it tightens to your panel but then it also tightens down on that front skirt then really the key to bring that together there's additional clamps here and then there's and then this has the component has two points there that then will connect your skirts together and then that's what's tying your whole system together from a grounding perspective now there's a little bit of a balancing act here where the spacers will fall off, but you just loosen up those clamps, have your spacers in place, and then the skirts behave fairly well in terms of tightening everything down. Remember, you need a clamp in the middle of two skirt sections to make sure we're continuing that ground all the way across the skirt. It helps with your overall look of your system, but it is functionally tying everything together from a grounding perspective. So then I'm just gonna put one grounding lug on my panels and that's how I'm gonna ground the entire system. So I'll just finish off here with the last section and then here's what it looks like from a little bit further back. It gives it a nice look, but again, it is functional. Now with that second row, depending on your wiring, we're all gonna have different wiring scenarios, but I do need to pull one wire back. So I have two MC4 connectors, which will wire these in series. I'm taking three panels in series and then bringing that into an EcoFlow Delta Pro. And because I have two rows, then I'll have two sets of those because I have two EcoFlow Delta Pro units. So I'll just zip tie these again, not the best wire management, but at least it is something. Once that's completed, then I'm ready to basically do exactly the same thing here, just on the second row. That is the beauty of these top speed systems. You kind of just build then build out your systems and it's super flexible over time. But make sure that the bases on each of those mounts, again, is right in the middle of the shingle so you don't have any leaks or issues in the future and get a nice seal with plenty of sealant under each pad. So overall for the first install of the top speed system, two thumbs up from the DIY perspective. 
Also what I love, because I'm tinkering around with these systems, I'm expanding them out, they're just running into portable power stations right now. So expanding them and changing them over time is a definite possibility. And here, I wouldn't have to have like extra rails just hanging out so I could add panels later on without having to do a bunch of rework. Here, I can actually just add to the system with this top speed mounts and really have no rework. So for me, that's another key feature to using this mounting system. Now you'll see a link in the description to where I got these parts. And also there is a configuration tool which can put together your bill of materials. How many of each component are you gonna have? Even though the mount is the main component, there was the spacers for the skirt themselves. There were the additional clamps. There was the skirts. There's some wire management that you might want. So there are other parts that you would need. And it's nice to have that full bill of materials just based off of you laying out your solar panels and putting in a few other specifications for your system. And also depending on where you're installing this, once you install roof mount, there are other building code regulations and NEC regulations that you need to follow. Specifically 2014 NEC starts to call out rapid shut down capability and in 2017 raise the bar where you're really going to have to have a micro inverter or an optimizer or some shutdown hardware at the panel level themselves so you will have to install those depending on where your roof is located now if you want to see how i'm going to bring those wires into the garage check out this video right here and i'll walk you through this exact setup when i'm bringing my mc4 wires into the garage and plugging those into the ecoflow delta pros so thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one take care